Ideas are like babies. If you don't feed it, it dies. That is why there's a saying that says if you want to find beautiful ideas, you go to the graveyard. But for us, we shall not go to the graveyard. We are here to explore what people have to offer, what people are building, what people are bringing on board. Today, we episode. have one of my colleagues. His name is Ian. When you scroll through his, his social media page, you'll find a very beautiful writer. You'll find someone that writes with passion, someone write, that writes beautiful poems that, you know, that touches, that touch your heart and you feel like, I should really meet this guy. So let us welcome Ian to this show. You're welcome, Ian. Thank you, Timothy. I'm Who? glad to be here. Who is Ian? Ian is a performance poet based in Kampala, trying to develop what a youth can get from the arts in the country. If we can make it, you know, give us some jobs as opposed to the traditional styles of getting work. So yeah, that's Ian, also known as Origi in the poetry circles. Origi. Yeah. Actually, I was looking for the name Origi. Yes. So when someone gets to scroll through your social media, he gets to see someone that is writing, someone that is poetic. And uh, you've mentioned that you're trying to, to make this away from to the traditional way. When did you start to get into writing? Getting into writing, well, I think I've been writing from a very long time ago, even at a young age. I used to enjoy English class so much. Every time they gave us composition writing, I used to what? That's what they call it. I used to mm -hmm. get good marks and mm. my friends used to come to me to, to cheat on writing papers. So I used to write from a long time ago. But writing poetry started in 2015 after my journey with university ended and there was a, there was a big hole. Job, like what should you do with your life now? You are done with school life. Where do you go from there? So I started to pin down some of those frustrations I had. And yeah, most of those poems I wrote actually from 2015 are part of this book. So yeah, I started in 2015 writing poetry, also performing it in the poetry circles. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about uh, talking about the time that you had left school and you get into that. But there is a, I get to see you from here that there is a lot that was happening in the university. Can you tell us how did the university get you into this poetic world? Poetic world. Yeah. Mm. In the university, I don't think I discovered it. In the university, when I was there, I discovered it after. Oh. Yeah, it, when I was at the university, I concentrated more on the academics. Yeah, so when that kind of ended and it had its own problems, I now in 2015, when I was done, I was looking for options. I was looking for options. So that's when I met my friend, who is also called Ian, who is the one who edited this book oh. and published it. So I met him in campus for him, I was still there. And Izanu started the Kelele Poetry Foundation. So I met him there and he told me his dream for poetry. I liked it. So I started to help him out, organizing events, writing poems, performing those poems. Yeah, so I think I, I discovered poetry after leaving university. After leaving university. Yeah. So how has the journey been since, since that time you started into poetry? And right now, have you seen yourself grow? Yes, as an artist, one of the most satisfying thing is to watch yourself improve from what you were yesterday, even to watch your fellow artists improve. So that has been there. I would say, yeah, my, I've improved writing style, confidence, everything. So uh, what has been one of your challenging moments ever since 2015? Making this book getting it out in print is a tough journey tough journey. yeah so anytime you meet somebody with a book out you put some respect you have to really bow for you. <laughs> so many of us yeah, can have write, but very few of us can put that writing on paper yeah because uh, uh our traditional paper here is expensive it's very expensive mm. so you'd find 
so many people they are still stuck with their ideas in the head on their laptops yeah. on their phones but they can't put them out on this kind of papers yeah. so i think you you're right to say that this is one of your best achievements since it is it is my best back. achievement thus far let's talk about the book what inspired you to to write i'm very sure that you had these ideas in your head and you're like ah you know what this time let me go out and write what really pushed you to not down that book and print it out well writing generally mm. i was inspired from a young age mm. i used to read a lot from a young age so if you read so much you feel like you want also to put out some of your ideas so i wrote i wrote down i used to write small small articles but then after campus i started trying out poetry because poetry has a way it condenses the language and the ideas in a small space you say a lot more than you usually say in other mediums uh also the unemployment brokenness inspired me to pen down some frustrations you ask yourself why why am i why am i doing this why am i here so yeah i would say what inspired me to write this book is the unemployment and the kind of depressions that come with that you know the the time you you are not able to use when you're not doing anything you're just at home sitting you are you're seeing your life wasting away yeah that's where i got the inspiration uh yeah okay so with me here i can see the uh the title rock bottom and up what a title how did you get to have this kind of a heading many of us would write, would maybe write the true members of anasasi <laughs> or the life of timothy mm. like if you check even the book everything is the other way around so what inspired you for that kind of a title uh title title actually has also its long story <laughs> <laughs> mm. i tried out so many titles and the team i was working with they knocked them all down because they were saying ah people are not going to it's not going to spark the interest i i i started with corner of the lost they're like mm, it's too weak so i bought out like 30 more titles and i struck them down until one day i thought of this one and they all voted on it to got a 100% rating compared to the others which had like zero rating so yeah it was it was brainstorming that's how i got the title Uh, the book cover the book cover itself is a it's an art piece it was done by a professional artist he he drew it using his interpretation of what he got from the book so you who is viewing it you can view it as an art enjoyer and you interpret for yourself what you can get from the book cover from the book yeah and the title title is a, is a summary of what is in the book it's a journey of the the writer from from his rock bottom and the way he found his up yeah wow must be a very beautiful read so uh from what you've been talking I've picked out something that I wish I, sh- I should share with everybody uh you m- much as you have a very good idea it is always good to brand it the best way possible the best way that can get the attention yeah of your prospects of your people that are going to buy into it so if you see he had over 30 names and they kept crossing out till they narrowed down to one so name one. so it is good to give something a good name actually when when you even read the bible they say that good name is better than maybe wealth or anything so good branding is something to not a name that is catchy it will always leave prints on the hearts of men so That's how Actually, interesting. maybe just to add, the book cover, I think it's the one which has got the most interest from people out of all the aspects of the book. Oh. Yeah, people just see the book cover and they're like, I want to at least hold this book. It's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's something that you nailed. You not only worked as a, as a writer, but you involved an artist to bring that idea to life. Yeah. That is nice. So... Uh if someone wants to get that book where can they find it uh you can find the book with Kelele Arts Foundation uh you can contact the Kelele CEO Ian 
ni webio na Jason uh, Timothy will provide the number or you can contact me personally I can get you some copies uh, Kelele Arts Foundation is a poetry NGO that is looking to grow the poetry industry in the country yeah so yeah we are plugging everything poetry okay so uh that's this book has been on for almost a week since yes. you launched it yes what have you achieved what do you think when you look into this into that one week what is your greatest uh, i want to call it achievement but what have you seen change about the people change about yourself within the one week since you launched the book um i think the book itself is an achievement but also the people's reaction to me is completely different compared to before the book came out as opposed to meeting me and i tell you i'm a poet and then you take it any way you want now i meet you and say i am a published poet with a book out so now you pay more attention you pay some respect and you're like okay what's the book about then we move on from there so that respect i guess Oh, that's nice. Mm. Uh, in the world of poetry, who mm. is your greatest role model? It's uh, Peter Kagai. Peter Kagai. Ngori, yes. The proprietor of uh, Chitara Nation, a poetry company in Uganda. He's already doing something that we as Kelele are trying to do, to sell poetry to Ugandans, and he's doing it well. So I look up to him. Yeah, he's... is like the good father of the industry good father of the industry mm. next five years what do you think you'll be up to i think i'll still be doing poetry hopefully with like five more books out by then yeah do you have one that is cooking i have four that are cooking oh, okay. <laughs> four <laughs> yes so hopefully i can release one every year ah, mm. the industry will be down I know you they are not ready by the neck. they are not ready <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that would be a very good start five books that's nice so any last comment or something for my viewers um maybe just to say that poetry is a serious thing in Uganda if you don't know now you know look out for your favorite poet you can start with me origi akatwishuka support a local poet we are going to take the country by storm and we are going to do it uh helping out society giving them products of value so yeah but poor it to say muzi thank you very much <laughs> we've had a very wonderful session with ian origi eh? this you call you ian uh, ian is for personal friends it's for personal friends <laughs> so origi <laughs> is what we use we have met up with origi It's a wonderful session we really enjoyed and uh, I'm challenged to also start out a little bit of poet though I think I'll start with the book of Solomon my favorite mm. I just be romantic in my <laughs> yeah but I think poetry is a very nice thing it touches the heart so people with ideas don't sit let's make this happen let your idea out thank you very much <laughs>